Let's have a look at the ring final circuit and finding a break in continuity without having to remove any of the sockets. In BS7671 you'll find Appendix 15 and this tells you how a ring final circuit is constructed and any permitted additions. But basically a ring final circuit starts and finishes at the distribution board and is connected to a 30 amp or a 32 amp or the current protected device. It's generally a 32 amp RCBO nowadays. But you will find many installations with a 32 amp MCB or even a 3036 rewindable fuse. Plenty of those still about. It's generally wired in 2.5 mm squared twin and earth, and that's got live conductors live and neutral, 2.5 mm squared, and a CPC of 1.5 mm squared. The are additions you can add to the ring circuit. As you can see in the diagram, it generally involves fusing down the additions. I won't go that deep into the construction of a ring final circuit and the reasons for it in this video. This is primarily a fault finding video. So let's get on to that. So as we know, a ring final circuit starts and finishes at the distribution board. So therefore we have a ring. We'll have three conductors, R1, which is the line, R2, which is a CPC, and Rn, which is a neutral. The line in neutral, R1 and Rn, have a cross-sectional area of 2.5 mm squared, and the CPC has a cross-sectional area of 1.5 mm squared. The difference between the two, 2.5 divided by 1.5 is 1.67. So the CPC has a smaller cross-sectional area, so it's going to have a higher resistance. So with the installation isolated, we would disconnect the conductors from the MCB, the neutral bar or the earth bar, and measure the resistance of each leg. We take a resistance reading between the two lives, between the two neutrals, and between the two CPCs, we're measuring that loop, that ring. Because the line and the neutral are the same cross-sectional area, and they're following the same route and the same cable, generally, they should have the same resistance. And the resistance of the CPC should be 1.67 times higher than the resistance of the line or the neutral. That's your basic continuity of ring final conductors. Now the fault here is, we've done the continuity tests, line and neutral, I've given us an acceptable reading, 0.32, but we've got open circuit on the R2, on the CPC, which suggests that there's a break in the CPC somewhere. Now this is the fault that we've got to find. And that can take some tracking down, because there could be lots of sockets, and opening every single socket to find a fault can be time consuming and possibly cause problems with decor and introducing faults. Let's see if we can find a break in the ring without having to open every single socket. A ring final circuit is a series of sections of cable and they're joined together by a socket or a spur or some form of junction box. And if you're looking for a break, this is often the easiest place to start because it is accessible. Of course, the break could be under the floorboard, it could be in the wall. And also you've got to think about, have you actually got a ring? If you've got two conductors leaving the MCB, it doesn't necessarily mean you have a ring. You could have two radials. But if you're getting continuity on a couple of conductors and nothing on the other, that would suggest a ring. And also a spur off a spur can cause confusion as well. But in this case, we do have continuity on two conductors. We're just looking for the break in the CPC. And because we've got sockets in place, we can take a measurement at each socket to find this break. With any fault finding, it's important to be able to understand the results. We have a reading of 0.32 on the live and neutral conductors, which seems acceptable, but of course, does that resistance seem reasonable for the distance the ring final circuit is covering? We've got seven sockets, which means there's eight sections of cable. And for simplicity's sake, I've given each leg the same resistance. The line and neutral are 0.04 ohms for each section. And I've also rounded up CPC from 0.066 to 0.07 and as you can see that's made the resistance reading for the CPC 0.56 if you're multiplying the live conductor 0.32 by 1.67 you would actually get 0.53 but to keep it simple I've rounded it up so I'm going to use 0.56 ohms for my resistance the CPC throughout this video 
just in case you're working out on a calculator and wondering why the CPC is slightly different. And just for an example, here I'm testing the ring as if I was doing an R1 plus R2 for the circuit. This is not the R1 plus R2 we record in our certificates for a ring final circuit. I'll explain that towards the end of the video. This is just a simple continuity test for a radial where we connect the line and the CPC together to get a resistance value. And it's generally used to prove continuity of the CPC. And obviously we haven't got continuity because we've got a broken CPC. This is just an example of what the continuity should be as we see when we start testing. So we're looking for a broken CPC. So we're going to test the CPC to a live conductor and that can be line or neutral. Depending on what conductor is broken, you've got various different combinations. You can test R1 to R2, R1 to Rn, R2 to Rn. Just be careful how you connect your leads to your meter. On my meter, continuity is between L1 and L2. So you'd move your test leads to the correct ports on your meter. So if you're testing R1 plus R2, you're red and green to L1 and L2. R1, Rn, red and blue to L1 and L2. And R2 to Rn, be green and blue to L1 and L2. Do make sure you set your meter up correctly. It's a very simple test with the installation isolated. At the consumer unit on leg one, we connect together the line and the CPC and on the continuity setting on our meter. So we start at what we consider the first socket. Methodically, we'll go around how we think the ring is arranged and take a measurement at each socket. And what you'll find is when you get to a particular socket, you'll get an open reading. And this is starting to narrow down where the actual fault is. You can see here, start at socket one. Get a reading of 0.11, which is what we expect. If you get gradually increasing values, it'll suggest the root of the ring final circuit. Socket 2, 0 0.22 ohms. Socket 3, 0.33. Socket 4, 0.44. Socket 5, 0.55. Socket 6, I'm getting 99.9 .9 kilo ohms. An open reading on my meter. Socket 7, I'm getting the same. So it would suggest that there's an issue in this area between socket 5 and 6. And to narrow the fault down to the exact socket, we'll now test from leg 2. And it's the same procedure at socket 7, 0.11. We won't be expecting 0.88 ohms at this socket. We're testing the first section, so we'll be expecting a reading of 0.11 ohms. So we've got that at socket 7. Socket 6, we've got 0.22. Socket 5, we've got the open circuit again, 99.9 .9 kilo ohms. If you go around the other sockets, you're going to get the same reading. So our meter is telling us the break is at socket 5. And here we can see the issue. At socket 5, the connection between the CPCs is broken. You can see the resistance readings as we go around each leg. And this is quite a simple example. Often on ring finals, you might have more than one fault. Or you might not necessarily have a complete break. You might have a loose connection that gives poor readings. A certain conductor is testing higher than it should. I think the skill with this kind of testing, though, is to be methodical. Record your values. Take your time and trust your meter. It's a simple fix. Re-terminate the connection that's broken and retest. So I mentioned the R1 plus R2 reading. For ring final circuits. We take our continuity of ring final conductors and for the live conductors it's 0.32 and for the CPC it's 0.56. We add the R1 and the R2 together. We divide that by 4 and in this case we get 0.22 and on our ring final circuit we cross connect the conductors as you can see in the diagram. The outgoing leg of the line is connected to the incoming leg of the CPC and the outgoing leg of the CPC is connected to the incoming leg of the line conductor. You cross connect them in a figure of 8. We have our calculated reading of 0.22 and we go around each socket on the ring final and we should get a reading of roughly 0.22 ohms and this would suggest that the ring final is wired correctly. If one is slightly higher, it could be a spur or it could be a connection which is not permitted. 
So that's your R1 plus R2 test. So thanks for watching this. I hope you found it of some use. This is also on my Instagram, which is at JPE7671. Quite handy to look at from your phone. So thanks for watching. And as always, take care and work safely. Okay, thanks now.